Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. One of the biggest problems with growing tomatoes is a disease called blight. Now blight affects nearly every tomato grower that I know. And in today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share you my top tips on how to stop or how to prevent blight from happening and ruining your tomato crop. When you're selecting your tomato seeds, selecting things that you like to grow and things that you like to eat is one of the best things that you can do. But also look for those varieties that have built in blight resistance. Now this is what I've done with this plant here. Now I've grown a variety called Crimson Crush here. Crimson Crush is a nice full size tomato. It's quite productive in, in terms of how many tomatoes per truss and how many tr trusses you can get to per plant. I'm aiming for about four trusses on this plant, but as you can see, the they're already starting to ripen. They're a good sized tomato as well. Plants like Crimson Crush are gonna give me that protection from, from blight and I'll be able to grow those outside and not have to worry about them being ruined by this horrible disease. As you can see, with my tomato plants, I like to grow them on a single stem. And that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna tie this one in onto this cane. I like to grow them on a single stem and I grow them on, using bamboo canes or other supports that I have in the garden. And I use these soft ties made from old t-shirts and old cotton rags that don't damage the tomato plant. But growing them on a single stem means that I'm getting plenty of airflow around the plant and I'm not allowing, to, allowing it to bush out and go um, get loads and loads of leaves. Remember with blight, it's an airborne disease that when it first attaches itself to the plant, it attacks the foliage first. So the less foliage that you have on the plant, the less amount of surface area that you have for that fungus to attach itself. So I'll show you, I've got, now some might say that's counterintuitive, um, but if I show you this plant, now this is a variety called honeybee. I've practically got no leaves on this plant, but I've got one, two, three, four, five trusses on it and I'm growing it outside. Because it's on this thin plant and it's, it's not a massive plant, I'm gonna top it now. And I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna let it get any bigger. And that's, that, that's my next tip. When you're trying to harvest tomatoes outside, you're gonna push yourself to be able to maximize the amount of tomatoes that you can get over the finish line. Because this tomato plant was sown really early, I've, got, I've, I've been picking off this tomato plant and I'll get, I'm quite confident that I'll get all of these five crosses to harvest, even though I'm growing it outside in the UK. So not a problem here. Now, if I move on to this plant, this is another. This is not a very strong plant actually, and this has been set, this has been picked on by disease. If you do have a, a tomato plant with blotches and diseases that are appearing on it, whether it's blight or whether it's any other type of disease, get them cut off. Do you know as soon as you notice anything, get rid of any get rid of it, because you can slow the spread of blight down. It might not be possible to get loads of fruit off the tomato plant, but you can push the ones that you've got all to harvest. So I've pushed, so I, what I've done is I've got one, this tr these two trusses have had poor pollination. It's not a very, this isn't a very strong plant. So I've got a couple of truss, a couple of good trusses at the bottom and then some poor trusses at the top. So I've topped it off. If I get those to harvest then I'm happy with that one because it's not a very strong plant so I'm not going to try and put all my hopes in that type of plant. Continuing on with that theme of airflow is pinch out anytime you see side shoots or suckers pinch them out so that's what I'm going to do with this I'm going to just come in and I'm going to take that sucker off and there's a big sucker here I'm going to take him off as well so I've taken that sucker off but don't throw these suckers away I'm going to save these suckers towards the end of the video. And there's a reason that I'm strimming back the leaves. Um, but I'm gonna save these suckers to, towards the end of the video and I'll show you exactly what I'm gonna do with this to, to build up my blight resistance. One of the most essential things to control blight is keeping the leaves dry. So make sure you don't water the foliage, especially if you're a nighttime waterer. Make sure you water the soil. And also, make sure you've got a good healthy layer of mulch on top of your soil. So I've got a pot of compost, mixed soil, um, and I've topped it off with about an inch of wood chips. So that's gonna prevent any soil splash. But to, the additional thing about soil splash is I'm gonna trim off any leaves that are at the bottom sort of foot or so of the plant. So I don't want any leaves at the bottom foot or so. So when I water, I don't want any risk of, of splash at all. When water splashes back up off the soil onto the tomato leaves, you don't exactly 
get blight, but you get another kind of blotchiness appearing and damage to the leaves. And that weakens the plant and that makes it more susceptible to blight. And then blight can set in and it can decimate your plant even, even more. Now, with all plants, growing the strongest, the healthiest plants that we can grow is going to give us the resistance to all types of diseases. So that's why I like to make sure that I've got, I'm regularly watering, but I'm not over watering, I'm not under watering, and I'm watering at the base of the plant so the water doesn't get back up onto the leaves and cause me more trouble. So you might hear a lot of gardeners and a lot of gardening books tell you to plant your tomatoes up against a brick wall. And that way the radiant heat will give your tomatoes a nice ambient temperature for them to grow in and to thrive in and to grow strong in. Yes, that's true from a point of view of providing additional heat for your tomatoes. And it's really important, especially if you're in a cold climate. But for blight, it's a problem. Now, if you've got your tomato planted up against that brick wall, air is going to come in from one side and it's going to just, that same damp air is just going to hang in around the tomato plant. Remember, blight is an airborne disease. It's it thrives in moist, damp conditions. If the air is getting in around the tomato plant and it's got nowhere to disappear to, it's just gonna hang around the tomato plant. That's why the last few tips have covered up cleaning off excess foliage, excess suckers, making sure that you're watering towards the base of the plant and you're not allowing water to splash up on the leaves. Now we're making sure damp air is not lingering around our tomato plants. Remember that, that brick walls are great for giving additional heat and radiant temperatures, but they're not good for blight. Now here's another tomato plant and the number it's got a number of trusses on it. It's got one, two, three, four, five. So it's got five trusses on it. And what I'm going to do with this plant is any of these leaves that are in the middle in between trusses, I'm just going to get rid of. The tomato plant's not going to need those leaves anymore. And I'm going to limit the number of trusses to those five. So I'm going to top it top it there and I don't want it to grow any higher than that because it's outside and I want these tomatoes that I've already got to ripen all the way so I'm going to clean off a lot of this excess foliage um, yeah that see I've pretty much stripped it back naked and now hopefully those tomatoes will get get going and get ripening for me pretty soon another tip if you can grow your tomatoes under glass so here I've got another single stem cherry tomato growing. It's a sweet million and I'm growing it under glass. And again, I've trimmed back, I've trimmed back the leaves. I've got no lower leaves. I've got a, very, a few leaves higher up. One thing yet I've missed on this one is I've missed this sucker here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six trusses already that have set. One of the things that I did with one of these a tomato plant like this last year was I was a little bit cheeky and I ideally I would have liked this sucker to be two leaf sets higher up. I should have taken this one out and left the one higher up because what I want to do is now that this side's hit the top, I'm going to trim him, give him a haircut up there and he's not going to grow any taller. And with this sucker, I'm going to bend him over the top here and I'm going to grow him horizontally. And I'm going to grow him horizontally to that wall. Last year I did that with a tomato plant at the other end of the greenhouse and I grew 12 trusses on one tomato plant. So I've got six here, my record's 12, let's see if we can beat it. Growing your tomatoes under glass, like I mentioned, blight is an airborne disease. So if you've, got, um, if you've got them under glass, if you've got them under cover, whenever you get a blight warning, close the doors, don't allow damp air to get inside. It's the middle of the July, coming towards the end of July, it's way too late to sow tomatoes from seed now. But all's not lost, and that's why I've picked this sucker and I stripped the leaves back off it. Now, what I'm doing, and I'm going to show you what I'm doing down here. Earlier on this morning, that's what I've done here, is I've taken a load of suckers and I've planted the suckers. All of these little hairs on the stem of the, stem of the sucker will turn into roots, and within a week, you're going to have a ready-made plant. And Whenever you take a sucker, you'll always see that at the tip of it, you've got some flowers forming. Now, you plant that sucker, and within a few weeks, you're going to have flowers blooming. And within about a month, you're going to have tomatoes forming on your new plant. And that's that's fantastic record by anyone's standard. You'll never get a tomato grown from seed to bloom within a month. All in the space of a month, I've gone from taking a sucker like that, to sticking it in a pot, 
getting it to root and then planting it out and I will have tomatoes on here in no time. That's what we want to do with planting suckers now. We want to build that blight resistance. If we get a blight attack now, we, we take these suckers and we plant them. We put them either into a greenhouse or somewhere protected just while the short term blight, blight attack is over. Because I'm sure in August it's going to be nice and dry again. So if we get the blight attack now, with these young plants, by the time it comes to August, we're going to be able to plant these out. We'll be able to harvest tomatoes within a month. Take some suckers, plant them again, and then if you these are like your insurance policy. So if your main if your main plants do die, then you've got your backups, yeah. And you're not because you're not growing them from seed; they're ready to fruit straight away. So they're my top tips on surviving a blight attack. If you like what you've seen, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for regular updates. I also make videos on Patreon. So if you want to support our channel, there's an option for you to do so there. I'll leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.